I know many of you could say very strongly that you feel worn out by the controllers in your life, which is why I put together the workshop, the course, Free to Be. We have a link below that will take you to the information that can tell you all about that. It's very extensive, and if that's something that would be of interest to you, I would invite you to go below and, and click that link, and you'll find the information that will uh, explain to you the course, Free to Be. I want to begin today with a statement, and you see if you can agree with me on this. And that statement is, there is no such thing as no communication. You know, so many times I hear people come into my office or elsewhere, and they say things like, well, I have this broken relationship with this individual, and we're just not communicating. Yeah, whether it's with an ex-spouse who's very difficult to uh, uh, engage with, or it's someone that you've worked with, or someone inside your extended family, you can think, you know, that person is just, they won't say anything to me. Or I try to talk with them and it goes absolutely nowhere. We just can't communicate. But then I go back to that statement. Well, actually, there's no such thing as no communication. You see, communication can happen in many ways beyond just exchanges of words. And that's something that narcissists, especially the covert narcissists, have figured out, and they will use that to their advantage left and right. And it's very important for you to understand that dynamic. Now, let's keep in mind that overt narcissists, they, they leave nothing to the imagination. You know, they want to be in control. They want to be superior. They'll dismiss you uh, if you disagree with them. They have a strong attitude of entitlement. They can be manipulative, exploitive. They don't care about your feelings at all. And it, when you're in those people's presence, it doesn't take much time for those kind of ingredients to show up. The covert narcissist, however, is thought, you know, there's a different way that I can go about doing that and I'm going to be less vulnerable and in doing so, I can actually have more power. And so they develop what I call the silent language of narcissism. Uh, it's like, well, I'm going to let you know exactly how poorly I think of you. I'm just not going to put it into words and that way I'm not going to leave any kind of trail there where I can be held accountable. And uh, they, they are every bit as self-absorbed as the brash, grandiose, overt narcissist, but they're much more difficult to pin down. <clears throat> uh, now, I, I want to first of all start with, uh, with certain ingredients that they actually have inside of their personalities, and then I want to go second into some of the actual communications that you can read between the lines and understand that come along with these ingredients. When you have somebody that has covert narcissism, they're going to be much more under the radar in the way that they show their self-absorption. For example, they can just be the ultimate disinterested person. They can be inattentive toward you. They can deem you to be irrelevant. If you say something, it's like, hmm, <laughs> you don't matter. Or they can have a real low regard for you and your opinions, and they can show very low concern whatsoever for your well-being, has that ever happened with you? They can be cold and aloof, or they can be highly avoidant. It's like, where'd they go? Or you know, they, they just seem to have such a condescending attitude towards me. They can be forgetful. It's like, oh, you told me that? Oh, no, I'm sorry, I forgot. But in doing so, uh, they're communicating something. They can be emotionally unavailable or quietly self-indulgent. They can have bland facial expressions. They can be non-affectionate or they give no affirmation. They can have an air of sarcasm in the way that they engage with people. They can be super defensive. I mean, you cannot penetrate in their hearts and minds. That's that, Those are some of the ingredients that the covert narcissist will carry. And you're over there thinking, man, we're just not communicating. And I go back and say, oh, yes, no, yes, you are. That, that uh, covert narcissism is saying a whole lot. They may not be using actual words, but uh, something is being said in their silent forms of interaction with you. 
Now I want you to, I, I, I'm gonna give you quite a few different things that typically are being conveyed or communicated silently by that covert narcissist as they engage with you in their passive aggressive approach toward life. And, and as I'm going through this, I want you to think, have you ever felt like this was what they would say if they could actually articulate what's going on? They'll never say it, but I wonder if you can see if that's, this is something you've ever run across. For example, when these covert narcissists go into those, uh, those uh, silent forms of non-communication communication, basically what they're conveying is, you mean nothing to me, or I'm the only one in the equation that really matters. Haven't you figured that out yet? Or uh, connecting with people, eh, it, it takes too much energy. I don't want to be bothered. That's what they're communicating. Or they're also communicating, if you think that I'm going to cooperate, think again. Or they can be communicating, I'm angry. I'm really angry at you. And they can hold a lot of bitterness and resentment. They can also be conveying, and I also feel wounded. But I'm never going to admit that. I'm not going to give you that satisfaction. Uh, they can uh, be communicating. I actually feel rather inadequate about my relationship skills. Many of them harbor in, internal feelings of insecurity. But then the next thing they communicate is, but it's a whole lot easier to just say it's your fault if I don't communicate well with you. Or in addition, these covert uh, narcissists, they like to communicate silently I like people, I like keeping people guessing about me. I like feeling uh, in power and I love that feeling of power that I get when, when I'm a mysterious individual. That's pretty cool. That's what they're, com they're communicating. Or they're also conveying, if anyone has rejected me, screw you. Although they tend not to say it quite that politely, not that that's terribly polite anyway. Or in addition, covert narcissists you know, through their silence can say, I just enjoy watching people scramble when I uh, sabotage their good plans. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I'm having a good time. Or they're communicating, I really want to be free from any obligations you may think that you're going to place on me. So give it a try because it's not going to work. Or they can communicate, I don't trust you. I don't trust you or anyone else. It's just not something I do. I'm not going to uh, make the effort to uh, to go over that bridge with anyone. Or they can communicate, no one, and I mean no one, tells me what to think, say, or do. Not going to happen. Or I get a charge when I see how frustrated you feel. <laughs> it's kind of like a game to me. You're a game to me. And then uh, they're also communicating I'm not going to necessarily tell you a lie, but I'm not all that committed to honesty either. That's part of the silent language of the covert narcissist. Now, as I'm saying all of this, I'm guessing that many of you are kind of nodding your head thinking, yep, that's exactly what I've experienced. And, and interestingly, you can have some people who are uh, sometimes that overt obnoxious, uh, narcissists that they're, they're just pushy and loud and over, uh, over the top. But then sometimes they can just swing and go to the covert side and they can shift gears. So it's kind of, it's what I call the chameleon effect. Any way you look at it though, these are the, the messages and the genius, I say that in quotation marks, the genius of this uh, style or strategy that they use is that they can say to you, if you try to call them out, I never said that. You got me wrong. And so they can't be held under any kind of scrutiny because if you say, look, this is what I uh, am feeling from you, or this is what I sense that you're trying to tell me, they can just kind of look at you and say, no, you got it wrong. <laughs> Once again, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm the nicest person you ever met. So if there's a problem here, it sure isn't me. That's the way that covert narcissists play the game. Now let's understand that these individuals are very fear-based. They're driven by that fear. They, they've determined that being open and letting people know who they really are and what they think you know, really is a giving up of power. <clears throat> but if you're a healthy individual, it's like, I don't want my relationship to be power-based anyway, but that's how they think. Uh, they, they think in terms of winners and losers and they, they don't want to be the loser. So they're going to win and they win by trying to make you feel inadequate. 
But in general, pessimism and futility is simply what drives them. Uh, they have no uh, good re or go no good thought about uh, creating uh, uh, well-being inside their primary relationships. A long time ago, they decided, no, that's an elusive dream. It's just not going to happen. So if that's the case, at least I need to be on the top of the stack when when everything uh, comes down. Now, understanding that, let, let's just kind of go with the notion that says. You want to have the least amount of connection with these people as possible. And I know sometimes you just can't get rid of them. You know, people say, or can't get away from them. People say, well, just go no contact. Well, sometimes you need to. Other times they're there and, and, uh, you can't help but just, uh, have interactions with them. But at, at the very least, make sure that your personal plans or even things like your schedule or business transactions and things of that nature have the least amount of connection to these people because they, they love being in the position of control. And if they can do it in a covert way that just leaves you feeling that much more, um, you know, just agitated, <laughs> they're over there just gloating, thinking, oh, I'm having so much fun today. Now, that being the case, I'm hoping that instead you can decide, well, I'm going to listen to my own inner counsel and live according to my ba uh, basic principles. And then as much as possible, I'm going to try to make sure that I connect with people that know how to handle relationships in a much cleaner way. I don't need to be a part of their power plays that they do in this passive aggressive covert style of self-absorption and control. Now let's, let's close with one huge thought. And that is the best way for you to be in control with these covert narcissists is to refuse to even attempt to play their control games. The best way to be in control is just quit trying to be in control and in doing so, be who you are. That's your superpower. And I'm hoping that you can live in the calm confidence that would underlie that approach. I do hope that you get good benefit from videos such as this. If you've not already done so, I would encourage you to go beneath the video and hit that subscribe button. We also have an email list that allows you to have uh, extras that we have, and uh, we'll keep things coming at you with promotions and things of that nature. If you have a need for counseling, we have a trusted sponsor uh, that we have vetted, and we have a link below that would take you to some online counseling. And if that's something you could use, I would strongly encourage you to do so. In addition, I, I want you to check out my free to be uh, workshop course. It's a very extensive and it's all about uh, dealing with the controllers in your life and how you can uh, understand what their games are and stay out of that. And if that's something you would be interested in, we have a link below for that. We also have our uh, other website, survivingnarcissism.tv, drlescarter.com, links below to books and other kind of resources. Uh, we're, we're here to be of help to you. Just know that covert narcissists can be some of the most difficult people on the planet to deal with, but once you're onto it, once you see what it is and you can see behind the scenes, I'm hoping you can devise your strategy that says, I'm not playing their game anymore. I'm quite, I'm quite okay with me being what I am. And in doing so, I hope that you can live a life that's anchored in calm confidence.